What a return by RJ Barrett. I knew that the Knicks needed all hands on deck in order to start winning a few games, and they were clearly missing RJ Barrett, another player who could score and get his own shot. And he gave the Knicks all he could give them and so much more in a spectacular return. We even saw Julius Randle finally find his offense. Dante DiVincenzo went nuts off the bench. And Mitchell Robinson showed you why he's such a dominant defensive force. The Knicks took it to the Clippers and absolutely beat them down in dominant fashion. We're going to break down all of this and so much more today. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss a second of any of the new content. And now, let's get started. RJ Barrett returned and he helped the Knicks defeat the LA Clippers. That's right, the Clippers that have Russell Westbrook, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and the newly added James Harden to the roster. And even with that star-studded lineup on the roster, albeit it was their first game together and they really didn't have any chemistry before that game, even with all that in mind, they still had the star power on that team to take it to the Knicks. They had the opportunity to close out the Knicks. They were up about six or seven points in that third quarter. The highest lead for them at that point in time. But they couldn't get it done because the New York Knicks on the defensive end of the ball was just monstrous. Not only Mitchell Robinson, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, RJ Barrett. To an extent, even Jalen Brunson, Emmanuel Quickly, all of these guys were playing the passing lane. They were getting buckets. They were taking the ball. They were getting rebounds. They were doing the little things that will help teams win games. And not only that, folks, the team was passing the ball. And they were passing the ball like nobody's business. And I think it all had to do with the return of our J. Barrett. As you can see, he was looking down on the city. He was waiting for us to shine the light in the sky. And we shined the light that said, RJ, help us. And he came and he helped the New York Knicks beat the LA Clippers 111 to 97. He had 26, 6, and 4. Julius Randle exploded and finally had a great offensive game. 27, that's the team high and also a season high for Julius Randle. 10 rebounds, 3 assists. And then Mitchell Robinson, no zero points tonight, double-doubled with 9 offensive rebounds, 4 steals, Josh Hart, 10, 3, and 7, and then James Harden on his debut against the Knicks, 17, 3, and 6. Shout out to Fred Katz from The Athletic for giving us this information. And one big point that we have to note. The Knicks won the second half of this game, 69 to 51. Now, if you were watching that first half of this game, man, was it terrible and bad basketball to watch. Not only were the Knicks not getting any shots to fall again, but they were taking bad shots and they were not getting back defensively. And the Clippers were getting anything that they wanted, especially from three and anywhere from the perimeter. But once we came back from halftime, it's like a switch on this team had flipped. Tom Thibodeau must have gotten in on them during the halftime break and said, I don't know what you guys are doing, but if you continue to play like this, we are not going to secure our first home win of the season. Because yes, folks, before this victory against the Clippers, the Knicks had not won any games at home thus far. The only games they won were on the road. So we needed this one, especially because we just dropped Two games that we could have won as well. And with the Clippers coming in with their chest all puffed out, thinking that they could win this game, especially after the trade that they just made. And they wanted to come in and make a statement. I am so happy that the Knicks not only beat the Clippers, but the Knicks dominated the Clippers. They blew them out, especially in that second half, right behind the work of R.J. Barrett. 
of Julius Randle, of Dante DiVincenzo, of Emmanuel Quickly, who was running point guard for a lot of that comeback for the New York Knicks, especially helping to increase the number of assists that the Knicks were doing during that time. So I got to give him a little bit of kudos and I got to give him praise as well too. Now, one player you're going to look at at the stat sheet and you're going to talk to me about might be Jalen Brunson. And I'm not going to lie to you. Jalen Brunson didn't have it this game and didn't really have that much of an impact. But the good news for the Knicks is he didn't need to have an impact this game for the Knicks to do what they needed to do and blow this team out. So that was good. He got to rest a little bit before Wednesday's game against Wemby and the Spurs. So that's good as well too. Anytime you can give rest to your stars, I'm not going to hate on that. Now, Jalen Brunson definitely needs to step up and do better because what I've seen from his offense, it goes up and down, up and down, up and down. It's not consistent. And that's not the player that he is. He used to be the pillar of consistency for the Knicks last year. Now, I can't look at him the same way this year. Now, it is early, so we have to wait and see still. But I need Brunson to correct that because it's not looking good early on. R.J. Barrett went off in the win against the Clippers. 26 points, 9 of 16 shooting, 2 of 4 from 3, 6 rebounds, 4 assists. This is a return from a sore knee. What sore knee? Clearly he needed the rest. I'm glad he got it again. Still looks like one of the best players on the floor for the Knicks. Consistent again, taking threes but not that many, taking what the defense gives him, attacking, getting to the line, making the baskets. What else do you want from R.J. Barrett at this point? R.J. Barrett is, without a doubt, the best player on this Knicks team since the season has begun, and it's not even close. Shout out to Jalen Brunson in the 45 that he dropped against Milwaukee. Loved it, loved to watch it. But consistency-wise, that award goes to R.J. Barrett because R.J.'s been doing this consistently each and every game. Even on the games that he hasn't been as great offensively and he has been okay on defense, he still manages to give you some type of consistent offensive output. He doesn't really give you a bad game, or at least not yet. And I can appreciate that about R.J., and I'm noticing that about him. And the fact that he can look like the best player on the floor with basically two all-stars with him on the court, and Jalen Brunson, who should have got it last year, and Julius Randle, who did get it last year, I think that is a testament to R.J. Barrett and the growth that we're watching right now. We are witnessing R.J. Barrett's best season right before our eyes. And I don't know about you guys, but it's making me very happy, it's getting me hype, and it's making me hopeful for this next season and what this Knicks team can do headed into the playoffs. Because if this R.J. Barrett can turn it up to even a different level, an even higher level when we get to the playoffs, look out. Because this Knicks team is going to be one of the hardest teams to beat in that playoff race. But let's also talk about his running mate tonight. We haven't been able to talk about him in this light for any game really since we started the season. But finally, Julius Randle has found his offense. Julius Randle tonight, as they demolished the Clippers. I just got to say that again. 27 points, 9 of 21 shooting. So he still has to get better and more consistent with his shot. Still not great, but he was aggressive. He went after it, and he got those points. 3 of 8 from 3, still not great, but again, aggressive, and he went after it. Also, 10 rebounds. Julius Randle was definitely looking like his best self tonight, even though it wasn't his most efficient self. And I think we all can agree, whoever watched the game, this was the best effort that I've seen from Julius Randle on offense the entire season. Number one collectively as a team that was the best defense I've seen from the Knicks number two and then the third thing the assist the way the ball was moving sometimes moving a little bit too much but still moving moving freely everybody touching it everybody being locked in and focused 
I love that. I love that type of basketball. That type of basketball is a beautiful basketball to watch. Watching the open man get five to 10 seconds by himself to shoot that open jump shot or shoot that open three, it's beautiful to watch. And how you get that done is ball movement by passing, by playmaking. And we saw a lot of that tonight from the New York Knicks, even though Jalen Brunson didn't play a lot during that third into that fourth quarter when the Knicks were making that run and comeback. And I think that's something to be acknowledged because I love Jalen Brunson, love what he does for this Knicks team, but I also can acknowledge that he needs to play make and pass that ball more because if he doesn't, he's going to hurt the Knicks just a little bit. And I saw him trying to play make just a little bit tonight, but there were some bad passes he was making, not like Jalen Brunson to make those passes. I think even Clyde said it. He doesn't get turnovers often, but he got a couple of careless turnovers during this game. And it wasn't like Jalen Brunson to do that. So a lot of fans, including myself, were a little taken back by that. Jalen Brunson, whatever he's going through, he has to get past it. He has to figure it out. And he has to overcome it to make sure he gets back to the player he was for the Knicks last year. That impactful point guard that we need. And I know he can get back there again. But to me, guys, R.J. Barrett's return was a major thing. And he was the best player on the floor tonight for the New York Knicks. But what about you guys? In your opinion, do you think R.J. Barrett's return helped this New York Knicks team? Do you think he was the best player on the floor for the Knicks? Or was it somebody else? Let me know in the comments below. Because honestly, guys... I would love to hear from you. That's going to do it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and smash that like button. Leave a comment below. And of course, guys, please subscribe to the channel. Until next time, Nick fans. Peace.